good look at this. It's my bread and butter, this station. A picture of my new house, my son's college education, a picture of my present and my future. And it's a pretty darn good one. But it didn't always look this way. Neither did my two attendants, Ted and Joey. It took something pretty basic to make me realize I had a business future here, if I could build a solid foundation under it. Yeah, it happened a few months after I'd opened the station. I was real new in the business. I remember Mr. Norton there had just pulled up. Yes, sir. What can I do for you, sir? Oh, uh, is Joey around? Joey? Yeah, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll go get him for you. I was lucky to have a guy like Ted working for me. He'd been in the business a long time. Figured he could help me work out my problems, help guide Joey along. Okay, bright boy. Another one of your patients is waiting. Huh? Yeah, you're one in the delivery room. Oh, thanks, Ted. Hi, Joey. Hi, Mr. Norton. Fill her up? Sure thing, Joey. Joey had been with me almost four months. One out of the three kids I tried out. He was different. But I was too green yet to know why. Hi, Mrs. Moore. I see Joey's busy. Yes, ma'am. Well, give me five gallons, Ted. I'm in kind of a rush. Get you right up, Mrs. Moore. Hi, Mrs. Moore. Hello, Joey. I'm in a hurry. I couldn't wait. Something had been going on between Ted and Joey for three or four weeks. They seemed to be rubbing each other the wrong way, like guys get sometimes when they work close together day after day. my charge book inside. I'll be right back. Joey, Joey, Joey. What's the matter, Ted? Somebody give you a rough time this morning? No, no. It's Joey. Look, you're going to have to do something about that kid, Hal. He's the best one we've had so far. He doesn't mind the hard work. Yeah, sure, but he's following us up out there in the driveway. If this keeps up, you're going to have to give people appointments to come in and get gas. Well, he's been here such a short time, and already people ask for Joey. They'd ask for us, too, if we spent all that time going around and around their car the way he does. And then you'd go broke in six more months. Look, I tell you, he's losing his business out there in the driveway. I've seen it happen before. If we don't do something, you're really going to start losing customers. Well, just watch them, Hal. That's all. Just watch them. I'd watched Joey. He was a little slow, I guess. Well, maybe Ted was right. People ask for Joey, but I began to wonder. Hey, boy. Yes, sir, yes, sir. I'll check your oil and water. No! Forget it. Just tell me what I owe you. I don't want an overhaul. Well, that'll be 495, sir. Okay, thank you for the light. Keep the change. But don't you want me to clean your window? Don't bother. Don't bother. So, 
people come in and ask for Joey. You're a big hero. Great. Now, the time you waste doing some kind of a dance around the cars up there, I take care of a couple of cars while you're waltzing around one. But I'm only trying to do what the book says. The book? Yeah, the one about the driveway selling plan. Oh, that. Sure. Hal gave it to me to study a couple of months ago. That's all I'm trying to do, honest. Like it says here in the book. Step one, greet the customer quick, pleasant, by name if I know. Always ask to fill the tank. Step two, deliver the gas. Holding a tank cap in my hands, I'll be sure to put it back on. Step three, go around back. Clean the rear tail lights, rear window. Up the right side of the car to clean the right windshield. Step four, get under the hood. Check the oil, water, battery. Look around a little at the other thing. Step five, clean the front headlights, check the front tires, clean the left windshield, collect or have the customer sign the charge ticket, invite them to the air tower and ask them to come back again. That's all I'm trying to do. One, two, three, four, five. It works, doesn't it? Look, when you wise up, kid, I bet I've had more driveway experience than any five of those company guys. I tell you all that, time, that takes too much time. We're too busy out there. Yeah, but I thought, well, gee, the company guys must work with a lot of dealers. Look, what it says you could maybe do 20 years ago when there were just a few cars. Then you could take the long way around. No, it says today. Well, look right here. This is all supposed to help you sell. Step one, helps you get off to a good start. Sell the largest gasoline bottle. You know, fill her up. Then when they say yes, recommend the right grade for their car. Step two, when you're through pumping, you look over the rear tires. Maybe they're worn or low in air pressure. Start around back. Step three, when you clean the right windshield, look at the wiper blade. Around to the front gives you a chance to look at the front tires. Four, under the hood. Oh, gee, a million things. Always show the dipstick. If he needs make a boil or a change, this will convince him. Check the radiator. Maybe he needs cleaner or a flush. Antifreeze in the winter. Check the battery. Keep the hood up while you sell items that go under it. Five back to the customer. Clean the left side of the windshield. Talk over the things he needs. The tires are low, offer to check them. Thank him, ask him to come back again. A uh, great chance he's gonna come back after you poured it on thick. Just like that guy you had was in such a hurry, huh? Oh, yeah, but he was... He was sore. Look, I tell you, I've been around long enough to know that this thing's too, I don't know, clumsy. You pull us on most steady customers, you irritate them. But people know what they want, they'll tell you. You don't have to push. Look, you want to be a salesman, kid, go work on a saw. I... I don't know, I... Well, I do. Look, I've been pounding driveway for seven years. We sell gas, we sell oil. That's the big deal around here. Kid makes me blow my top. I keep telling you, he wastes time getting people in and out. He could be building in volume. He wastes time dancing. I don't dance. I, I'll just, just... It's time he grew up with a job, Hal. Or this station's gonna be in real trouble. I don't think you suck your dough in this station just for an excuse to get out of that office you were cooped up in. I'm sorry, Hal. I, I thought I was... Well, the book... Okay, Joey, you had to start someplace. I don't know what to do anymore. Oh, no, look. Joey, you're doing a fine job. But Ted's been in this business for a long time. You know, you just got caught in a rut, that's all. Look, I didn't get into this just for the clean, fresh air, you know? Joey, I've got to run this station like a business. And I intend to. And that's something I know a little about. Now, my business depends on volume. That's logical. The more you sell, the more you make, the more we all take home, right? Well, we've got to move faster than anybody else on the street, Joey. We've got a terrific location here, but if we don't keep up the flow, we'll fold under. Sure. So you... You watch Ted, huh? He's a good man. He's got a lot of experience. He's got a nice feeling for this business. Okay, huh? You're the boss. <laughs> Yeah, I was the boss, with a business to protect. So I had to get involved, make a decision, be a manager. I couldn't decide against Ted's practical experience, but I wondered, I sure wondered. How could I know a simple decision like that was gonna kick back where it hurts?
Well, Joey was quick to learn. He was like that. Followed Ted's lead like his life depended on it. Soon you'd have thought there were a couple of mechanical men out there, getting people in and out, trying to outrace each other. So, Joey, I'll be right back with your slip. Sure, okay. Like I said, how could I tell in advance a simple decision would kick back where it hurts, at the heart of my business? But it did. And Mr. Norton here was the baby who brought it to my attention. Well, gee, Mr. Norton, I'm sorry. No, that's just peachy. A couple of days after I'm in here, I'm out on some godforsaken road, and I reach a station, and the guy takes a look at the stick, and he tells me oil. A couple of more miles and I might have lost an engine. Well... Look, I've been coming in here ever since you opened. I expect you guys to keep track of what's going on in my car. Who took care of it? Joey. Oh, but what's the difference? Lately, I've had to ask to have my water checked, the oil looked at. Brother, I hate to think of something happening to that car when my wife and kids are in it. Well, Mr. Norton, all I can say is we'll do better from now on. You sure will if you want me coming around to this gas station. Gas station, my foot. I run a service station. Or maybe it is a roadside stand. Hmm. Gas station or service station. Well, I had to tackle the root of the problem. Hiya, Herbie. Hey, Joe. Still up? Oh, no, not today, man. Look, give me exactly 87 cents worth of the small stuff. Nothing small about this stuff. Good go to the top of its class. She looks pretty good, Herbie. Well, she's all I got, man. It's my spaceship, my rocket to the moon. You said it, man. 87, right in the butt. Hey, this car wax is real crazy. <laughs> and you know it. Am I glad you sold it to my old man? Well, there's nothing but the best for you, Herbie boy. <laughs> Water's okay, Herb. Well, it should be. I filled it this morning. Uh-oh. -uh. Herbie, come here, will you? Why? What's up? Well, I think you got a small leak in the radiator. Oh, no kidding. Yep. Well, what do you know? I'll put in some liquid starter. That will take care of it. No, no. My father's got something at home. I can take care of it. Okay. Well, let's give the old battery a little check. <laughs> the battery doesn't look so hot. Oh, well, gee, you gave it a charge just the other day. Yeah, look. I told you then it wouldn't hold the charge. You should really replace it when you get paid next week. You might get stuck all night sometime up on Honey Hill. Yeah. <laughs> Such a wonderful thing should happen to me. With money yet. Yeah, true. But it might turn out to be more expensive than a Gulf battery. Gas station or service station? Hmm. Okay, I'll be in next week, Joe. Okay, Herbie, all right. There you go. Okay, thanks, Herb. Okay. See you on the home stretch. I'll be right here, Herbie. You're lovely. You know what you do to me? Feel pretty good today, huh? 
Nothing. Hey, Joey. I thought we cut out that driveway selling plan stuff. Yeah, why? Well, what were you doing out there just now? With Herbie? No, I grew up with him. I know his car. I've been all over it a million times. It sure looked like you were giving him that old driveway selling plan. Ted. What was it you once said about this plan? Insulted people or something? No. You know, people feel like you're giving them the business. Trying to sell them stuff they don't want. Push them. Well, Herbie wasn't very insulted out there. I didn't notice more get sore at you the other day, either. Huh? Well, the other afternoon. Boy, were you giving him the old driveway selling plan? Moving around the car, checking things? I didn't notice it took so much time. Well, that was different. Yeah, it sure was. You sold him a lubrication job and an oil change besides his gas. Well, I knew his wife was going on a long trip alone. I didn't need you any plan. I, I know her. I want the car to be all set for her. Well, why can't we do that for every customer? Everybody that drives in here. Look, I never saw anybody get sore at you for trying to help them give them service. But I just got chewed out a few minutes ago by a customer for not helping them. And I don't like it. I get scared that other people will start feeling the same way. Well, look, take Norton. Well, take anybody. Outside of a house, a car is the most expensive, important item he owns. And he doesn't know everything about it. Sometimes people don't know anything about their cars. Yeah, sometimes even a guy like Herbie. Yeah, even a kid like Herbie, who practically built that car with his own two hands, and yet, he depended on you out there to help him find things, to tell him what he needs. And why shouldn't he? We're experts. We're tuned up. We breathe cars every day. I haven't been in this business very long, but more and more, I feel that we're as professional as anybody. And you know, it makes you feel pretty good when you do a professional job, like you did with Moore, or like you just did with Herbie. Yeah, I guess so. Well. I haven't seen that Joey grin on your puss for quite a while. Look, well, you've got to feel good when you find a bad tire. Prevent a blowout, maybe save somebody's life. You save them dough. Make the car last longer by keeping it in good shape. Look, I've been around long enough. Yeah, Ted, I know you've been in the business a long time. And I agree. People might come in here and know what they want, but they don't know what they need until we tell them. And how are we going to find out if we don't look? But the plan's clumsy. Now, look, you agreed. We've got to get people in and out. Stay on top of the flow. Sure. We got them in and out. We put in gas and oil. We also got customers in and out of here so fast. But Ted, we hardly see a new face more than twice around here. This can't live that way. We're not a roadside stand. That's the short range view. It isn't building anything and I've got to build a business. Because there are two other stations within three blocks of here where the customer can go. And we want them to come here, right? Well, service and interest, enthusiasm, you, Joey, me, that's the long range. Service. And it'll sell gas and oil. And all these other things that people need for their cars but don't know about until we tell them. And you do it with a plan. You can't build anything without a plan. But Joey used it one, two, three, four, five, by the book. All right, but you can't always do everything by the book. This driveway selling plan's got to be flexible. Joe, if a guy's in a hurry, well, getting him out in a hurry is giving him the best service. This plan is just a way to get around the car fast. You did it the other day without knowing it, when you went around Moore's car. I don't know. Well, maybe I did. I don't know. But you did. You touched the key points. And it was natural. Nobody dreamed that up. That was you. It was you being interested, giving service. Checking the oil and water battery every single time is giving service. Asking to fill it up and then suggesting the right grade, that's giving service. Asking the customer to buy all these things when he needs them to keep his car in shape is giving service. And it keeps our cash register full, and boy, that does us a service. Now, I think they work hand in hand. We'll make out better when we're a service station instead of just a gas station. Look, I'll get that. You guys finish the job in the bay, huh? Well, 
Like I said, I finally opened my eyes. Realized I had to build a business if I wanted a solid future. We're beginning to fill it with a foundation of steady customers who buy their gas and oil and everything that goes with it. Yeah, you may not use the driveway selling plan every second. You may not have to. But it's sure the quickest way to get around the car from start to finish. Looking, feeling, finding the needs. So as the customer sees, feels confident nothing's overlooked. So people like you. Keep coming back for more. Yep, gas station or service station. Roadside stand or a business. Your profit, your future depends on the difference. And the difference is service with a plan.